Hi. Hi. You ready? Most kids just grow up, no problems with their mouth, no problems with their palate, speech therapy, nothing with that. But I was different, and that makes me special. We'd been married for 13 years. We weren't able to have children. I was very closed to the idea of adoption, actually, because I was adopted. But at that point in my life, I, it, it just kind of came to me, this is what you need to do. When we got there, when we sat down at the desk, the social workers were signing an announcement that was to go to the embassies that said, please be advised that children uh, four and under are not currently available except for those with medical issues. We're sitting here in this room. There's a wall of notebooks of profiles of children, about 100,000 children in orphan orphanages there. And I knew that the, the only profiles of children under four suddenly um, were going to be children with medical issues. I just stopped and I closed the notebook and I said, God, none of these kids look like what I thought. But if he's here, I need you to help me see with your eyes. I need you to help me see. And I just started over again. The first time that I saw his picture, it scared me because uh, Everyone has seen un uncorrected uh, cleft lips, but in addition, he had a, a hyperextended pre premaxilla, so his jaw came down and out, and his two front teeth were resting on his chin. I saw the picture out of the corner of my eye, and I said, keep turning the page till you find a kid that doesn't have any problems, basically. And that just wasn't gonna happen. So the first time that I saw it, I flipped past quickly. The second time that I saw this picture, I started to turn the page and something compelled me to just take my thumb and cover up his mouth. And in that moment, I saw him. I saw these big living eyes with these eyelashes that just kept going. And he was one of the only kids in the book that was smiling. And I thought, I. I can see you, I think I can see you. The day before we went to see him, I told her no touching, no hugging, no holding, and no bonding because we don't know if this is gonna be our little boy. So when they brought him in the room and I laid eyes on him, I just <laughs> broke all my own <laughs> rules. And I opened my arms and- He said, can I hold can him? Can I hold him? Until that moment, it was not clear, but in that moment, you could not have pried him from our cold, dead hands. And so we were there for a whole month, bonding with him, visiting him at the orphanage. And then after a month, we flew back to the States to find out what awaited us. We were naive enough to think, three diagnoses, three surgeries, let's snap it out, you know, let's get this thing done, you know? That's not exactly how it kind of turned out. The first thing we did is took him to a local pediatrician who took one look at him and said, we think you need to take him to children's hospital. And we said, okay. And so we brought him to the hospital. And I said, we don't have an appointment. We're just gonna sit here in the waiting room. And so Dr. Witt came out of his clinic and poked his head out the door and he looked at us and then he stopped. Dr. Witt came out and waved and look. I remember a big look on his face. He walked across the room and came and took a really close look at his face and then he said, can you come back here right now? And we said, sure. <laughs> he had what's called uh, premaxillary protrusion. The whole bony segment of the lip, the upper lip, was projected downward. And so this is really uncommon even in kids with bilateral cleft lip and palate. Most of the time that segment is up. And so that presents a whole lot of problems. It was not just down, but it was kicked out. 
And so that whole segment required movement upward and in a more level plane with the face. I've been doing this 24 years and I've only done two of those. So that just speaks to how uncommon that is. This was on a Wednesday. He said, what are you doing on Friday? And we said, whatever you tell us, that's what we're doing. And he said, we need to start working on him right away. Friday, bring him in. And it was, it was mind boggling. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> we were there two days later having surgery without an appointment and um, Dr. Witt just did it. He just, he just did it. Another thing that is really amazing to me about children's is that all of these experts from all these different fields are working together. It's not just surgery. It's not just um, any one thing, but they looked at him as a whole person. And so they conducted evaluations on his linguistic development, his, his hearing, his speech, everything, and developed plans working together to create this master plan on how to help our son. Here at Children's, I think we do a fabulous job of collaborating with one another. Being able to collaborate with the family, they are very passionate toward Victor, and it was great to work with them. For us, this is not just about the surgery. This is about the young boy who will become the man, who will become the, the person, the person that he's supposed to be. It's the whole package. Children like Victor, they're the reason why I'm here, really. We have a great team, a dedicated crew of professionals that are totally focused on the rehabilitation of kids with this problem. It's our passion. So when we would drive up to Children's every time there was an appointment, I would just cry and I would just say, thank God this place is here. Each member of the team has had such an impact on his life. It's for something. It's for something important. I think he's courageous for his own age. I mean, he comes to the hospital and he doesn't whine or whimper. He goes to the operating room and he looks at me as he's going to sleep and, and he's, he's courageous. So I think that you can learn a lot from a child like him. He has just this victorious spirit. He's gonna conquer things. When I see people go through something, I went. I just want to cover them and make sure that they don't they don't have to be afraid of what's going on. You can't have this much poured into you as a little kid and have this intense of a process unless it's unto something. I expect that when he's older, his impact on people in terms of hope is gonna far outshine anything that we could do. Most kids just grow up no problems with their mouth. No problems with their palate, speech therapy. Nothing with that. But I was different. That makes me special.